Hey everyone. So after watching and learning about the various types of welding machines, we need to start looking at the different types of power sources. So we know that there are different types of machines, but now when we start looking at the types of power that our machines utilize and provide, that is going to help us determine what welding process we need to use. And later on down the line, it's going to help us understand what's going on with the weld and the welding arc as we're welding. So this diagram that you see here is the volt ampere curve. Now this diagram can be used to explain both constant current and constant voltage. These are the two different power sources that are used in welding. We see constant current being identified by the red line. That starts out kind of high in voltage and then starts drooping down. And then constant voltage is identified by the blue line, which is not as droopy. So there are less drastic uh, changes with constant voltage. Now normally the graph is explained with both lines on the screen, but I think I'm going to try to make it a little bit easier on us and I'm just going to switch over and explain one at a time. So let's start with constant current. Constant current is the power source that we're going to utilize when we're using manual welding processes. Now what is a manual welding process? When you think of it, isn't every welding process done by hand pretty much up until you start using, you know, machinery to do the welding for you? Now, while that is technically true, what we mean by manual welding processes is that the welder, you or me, we are going to feed the electrode or feed the filler rod into the weld puddle by hand. The two welding processes that we're going to be dealing with in this course that are manual welding processes are shielded metal arc welding, which some of you may have heard called stick welding before, and gas tungsten arc welding, which many of you have probably heard uh, it being referred to as TIG welding. We're going to start with shielded metal arc welding, or SMAW for short, and then later on, towards the end of our course, we're going to start using gas tungsten arc welding, or GTAW for short. Now with SMAW, the electrode does a couple different things. One, it starts and stabilizes the welding arc. But then two, it also fills the weld puddle. So when we're fusing metals together, the electrode itself not only starts and maintains the welding arc, but it's filling in the weld. And we're doing that by hand. So when we're using SMAW, we have to slowly feed the electrode into the weld puddle. And that is why it's considered a manual welding process. And you may not be familiar with GTAW right now. So I'll just give you a little bit of information about that and then we'll keep moving. With GTAW, you're using something else to start and create the arc. You're still using an electrode, but the electrode is not being fed into the weld. The electrode is only there to start and maintain the welding arc. And then you're going to feed a filler rod completely separate from the electrode into the weld. So in both cases with SMAW and GTAW, you are feeding the filler material into the weld by hand or manually. So whenever you're thinking of stick or TIG, remember that these two welding processes use constant current. They are manual welding processes. Now let's go ahead and check out how we can use this volt ampere curve to help us understand constant current a little bit better um, and we'll, we'll use an example with shielded metal arc welding and I'll kind of leave gas tungsten arc welding out of this until we get to that point. Now we can see that amperage is down on the bottom and we've got a range of numbers and we have voltage up on the left and again we have a range of numbers. So think of them as if we were to start with amperage this would be 85 amps, 
90 amps all the way up to 130 amps. And on this side, voltage, we would have 18 volts, 20 volts, all the way up to 36 volts. Now, the way things work with manual welding processes, we need a high number of volts in order to start the welding arc. So if you think about it, run yourself through the motion. You have your ground clamp hooked to your work table or hooked to whatever it is that you're welding on, and your electrode is in the electrode holder. As soon as you make contact between the electrode and whatever it is that you're working on, it's going to want to stick, right? So you have to time it just right where you tap the material with your electrode and then lift slightly off. And in that gap, an arc is going to form. Now, if we think back to voltage being the driving force that pushes current through the leads across the gap between the electrode and the workpiece, um, we need a high number of volts to get that current flowing. So the greater the gap, um, that means more resistance. That means we're going to need more voltage to push that current through. But regardless of the size of the gap, there's just a gap that's there. Air does not con conduct electricity. So we need a high number of volts to push that current through, start the welding arc. And once the welding arc is established, we don't need that steady flow of high voltage to maintain the arc. We only need high voltage to start the arc. Once we get into the, the motion of things and things start, you know, we, we're able to start welding, our voltage is actually going to drop. And the machine is going to do that for us because the machine is going to register um, that init initial pulse of high voltage to start the welding arc. And as you start welding, the machine is automatically going to decrease the voltage and your machine is going to concentrate more on delivering a constant flow of amperage. Now, what's another name that's synonymous with amperage? Current. So when we talk about current, it's synonymous with amperage. So that's another way that you can identify shielded metal arc welding as being a welding process that utilizes constant current. What's the main variable that we're changing on our machine? current or in other words amperage and so you can start tying constant current to smaw with just a number of different ways of remembering hey this is why so again with constant current or with manual welding processes again stick welding or tig welding we need a high amount of voltage to start the welding arc but as soon as that welding arc is established and we start welding, we no longer need a flow of high voltage to maintain the arc. We don't need that much voltage to, to keep it going. Essentially, as long as we're doing or using the appropriate technique, the machine is going to stabilize and maintain the weld or the welding arc with minimal voltage. So over time, and honestly, this is in a fraction of a second, but we need to see this curve here in order to understand. In this, in, in this amount of time from starting the welding arc, and let's say it's like half a second, realistically it's probably less, but we're not gonna get into that just yet. When the arc is established and the machine registers, okay, uh, so-and-so is starting to weld, it's going to decrease voltage so that way it can focus on just delivering that constant flow of amperage. So in this example, let's just say that our machine is set to just under 130, or we can say it's 130 on the dot. The machine is going to say, all right, high voltage just to start the arc. And as soon as the arc is started, it's going to drop it down to just like the bare minimum and it's going to focus more on delivering that constant flow of current or amperage. Now, some of you might think, or, or actually, I should say this, some of you are going to see voltage on the front of your welding machines. You're going to see a readout. You're going to see a number, and it's going to fluctuate. 
So I'll say this now, and I'll talk about it more later. The main variable that we're setting on the machine that we can adjust with a dial or the push of a button is going to be amperage. The way that we control voltage while we're welding is through our arc length. This is the distance between the tip of the electrode and the top of the weld puddle. So that bright light that you can't really look at without the use of a welding hood, that's the welding arc. We can lengthen the welding arc by pulling the electrode further away from the weld, or we can shorten the arc length by pushing the electrode in closer to the weld. Now, the farther away your electrode is, the greater the gap, which means the more resistance to the flow of current. So if our arc length is long, where the machine is going to compensate by bringing this amount of voltage back up, but just long enough for that weld to be completed or long enough for you to realize, oh, my arc length is too long. I need to correct it and, you know, shorten the gap. And then just the opposite, the closer your electrode is to the workpiece, the lower the voltage is going to be utilized by your machine in that moment. Now, there are pros and cons to having a shorter arc length, having a longer arc length, and that's something that I'll, I'll talk more about later. Uh, but for now, let's just keep, keep moving along. Let's, let's move on to constant voltage. So constant voltage is the power source that's used with semi-automatic welding processes. So if you think of gas metal arc welding, which some of you might know as MIG welding, or flux core arc welding, which doesn't really have a simpler name. Some people just call it flux for short. These are our wire fed welding processes. So the welder still manually holds what we call a welding gun and we still pull a trigger, push a button, you know, whatever you want to call it. And once we push this button, the machine feeds the wired electrode through the cable, through the welding gun, and then into the weld. You can think of it as technically being a manual welding process, but we're only holding the welding gun to aim the, the wired electrode. The machine itself is feeding the electrode for us. So it's not a complete manual welding process. It's instead a semi-automatic welding process because you're pushing a button and while you are pretty much aiming the wire electrode, it's the machine that's feeding the wired electrode. So hopefully that makes sense. Let's keep moving along. Now with constant voltage, you'll see that this line is greatly different than the line shown with constant current. So with constant voltage, we're still using some amperage, but the machine is more focused on delivering a constant flow of voltage. So similar to constant current, we still need a higher number of volts to start the welding arc, but we need a continuous flow of voltage in order to stabilize the welding arc as we're welding. There's a couple reasons for this. When we start looking at modes of transfer, like short circuit, globular, spray, uh, with MIG welding, there are different things that are going on that require a constant flow of voltage. But let's just keep it simple for now. Let's talk about short circuit transfer with gas metal arc welding. And you don't have to remember this all right now. I'm going to go over this again once we get to GMAW. But this is just so you can understand constant current versus constant voltage. So if we start with short circuit transfer mode with GMAW, when you push the button on the welding gun, the welding electrode is going to make contact with your workpiece, whatever it is that you're welding. And that current is going to start flowing. It's going to want to flow uh, from the electrode into the workpiece or the workpiece into the electrode, depending on what your polarity is. And that's actually going to heat up the electrode. And it's going to heat it up enough to where it, a little bit of it uh, is going to start melting or it's going to start pinching off. 
Once it does that, it's going to be similar to pulling the stick electrode off of whatever it is that you're welding. With stick welding, you're going to have that gap. And when you have that gap, voltage is going to jump up a little bit in order to keep the flow of current constant, or I should say consistent here. And that is when your arc is going to establish. Now, once that happens, the electrode is going to continue feeding and it's going to feed into the weld puddle. Once it basically makes contact with the base metal, that weld is going to extinct or sorry, the welding arc is going to extinguish and the process starts all over again. When the weld solidifies, essentially um, that electrode is going to heat up. It's going to pinch off and it again is going to establish a welding arc. That little bit of metal that pinched off is going to become part of the weld. And like I said, the process repeats. The electrode makes contact. The electric arc extinguishes. The heat uh, from the flow of, of current and from the weld is going to help a little section of the welding electrode heat up pinch off or melt off however you want to think of it and again there's going to be a gap there that's going to cause for a welding arc to establish the section that melted off is going to become part of the weld and the cycle repeats and this happens this happens multiple times a second so you can kind of hear it as it's happening but when you're welding for the most part you don't really see the electrode hitting the base metal, the arc cutting out, the electrode melting off, and then the arc being reestablished. This happens, I don't know if I had to give you a good number, I'd say like a, a hundred times a second. So like I said, you can kind of hear it in the sound, but you can't really see it happen with the naked eye. And so because we do need a higher, higher number of voltage to establish the welding arc, and because this welding arc is cutting out and being reestablished multiple times within a second, we need a constant flow of voltage. This is going to help us to maintain a, a welding arc. So the constant flow of voltage is going to keep it reigniting that welding arc for us. That way there's no big interruptions in our weld time. And that's pretty much the difference between constant current and constant voltage. If I go back to give you a quick recap, constant current is the power source that's used for manual welding processes like shielded metal arc welding or gas tungsten arc welding, where we see a, a high number of volts being used to start or establish the welding arc. And then once that's done, the machine levels it out. It drops the voltage so that way it can focus on delivering a constant flow of amperage. So when you set your machine to 130 amps, that's what your machine is going to put out, 130 amps. And then we're going to control the amount of voltage by our arc length. So you can lengthen your arc length, you can shorten it, that's going to change the voltage, but your amperage is actually going to stay the same. It stays constant. Then when we use welding processes like gas metal arc welding or flux cord arc welding, when we're using constant voltage, we need that constant flow or that consistent flow of voltage to one, help us keep reestablishing the welding arc and then stabilize the welding arc. And we are going to vary our amperage a tiny bit but for the most part it's going to be all in the background once you pull that trigger the electrode starts feeding out and you need this constant flow of voltage to keep welding and that's that's honestly pretty much it i hope uh this made sense of everything for you thanks for watching